I think the only thing we missed was like talking to someone about something. Rackaback seems like he could be a big problem for us, Jim. He's obviously prone to violence, and there may be no gentle way to deal with him. Ah, so shoot it's him clearly up. Clearly unreasonable. All right, let's shoot him up. Oh, I gotta change the display. All right, should we just take him out? But what about Gorgamon? Rackaback falls defenseless against the power of the phaser. The power of the phaser. All right, the problem with that is that might cost us a point, though, because we did violent methods. But McCoy said we could, we should. There was no other way to do it. An inelegant solution, Captain Kerr. But efficient. Yeah. Well, let's see how much further we have, and if we get a two, we can come back to this point. Gorgamon didn't seem to care. I listened to my brother Rackaback and to my friend Tuscan. They say we have to protect this room and keep anyone from getting... Well, Tuscan's just confused. I don't think I should... I'm sure things will change, but I'm not sure what to think of you. I just don't know if I should trust you. Spell that well, things are much for follow. I think you should trust them. They've repaired the garden, which is yeah. good for all of us. They gave fresh fruit to my boy Stan Bob, when even his own mother couldn't manage that. Yeah, maybe... Oh, God. What I've seen of them... If you trust weasels like this, you are certifiably mad. Not that that would make you any different from the rest of your lunatic fellows. Well, I'm inclined to want to trust people in spite of everything. I think I should show you the way into the heart of the phase. The Please secret do. entry that Tuscan is so afraid of. I feel that something good can come of this. Wow, look, look at that walking with purpose. Those power arms. Moving to and fro. Oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna show you the secret passage. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> now revealed to sight, this looks like a Jeffrey's tube aboard the Enterprise. You can get through, but it is definitely not a normal passage, especially because it almost seems to shimmer around the edges. He's like rocking that muscle T. He's like, these muscles are made for walking. Walking is what they'll do. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, okay, another Jeffrey's tube. Definitely not a normal yeah. pet. <laughs> yes, it has. Uh, it, 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 they don't call it a head cold for nothing. No, but it's for sure. <laughs> I listened to my brother Rackaback. Well, I'm sure. I guess I'll just trust you to do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's let's go to there. My son, Stan Bob. Yeah, that's the reason, by the way, Spellbot. I'm I'm I have this channel, and we're doing this uh, whole uh, adventure project, catching all the games that. Uh, I never did get to play as a kid, like, most of which I wanted to, of course, and discover all the great things I didn't even know about. This looks almost identical to the containers that housed the phase. This room Part appears of strangely compressed, giving a sense of closeness that borders on the discomforting. Every wall is interlaced with what looks like a web cage of electrical wirework with almost organic looking nodules and bubbles. Nodules. You have the distinct sense that you're inside a machine and that it doesn't seem to occupy space in any natural fashion. Yeah, we should do a new save, actually. Uh... Save new game, replace previous, delete pre... Save new game. Uh, seven phase. Okay. This looks almost... In this section of the wire web work, you see new wire replacing a burned out section. Burned out section, eh? This looks almost. So is this all the same? Outside? This looks almost identical. Yeah. Look at the Klingons just approaching our room. This seems pointless. You seem pointless. No effect. This web wire wall reads somewhat like an antique hand wired computer circuit, Captain. And at the same time, like something which surpasses 
even what can be found aboard the Enterprise. This damaged area does not appear to be functioning, but based on information I acquired from my interaction with Puzzlewit, Puzzlewit? I could attempt to repair it with a connector and some wire. We do have some wire. Who, pray tell, is Puzzlewit? Any relation to Puzzwiz Retrograde Tom, perhaps? The information I acquired from Puzzlewit's mind indicates this could be a delicate operation. Easily mishandled. I think we should start off with the connector from the light bar in order to complete these repairs, Captain. Agreed. Oh, okay, so I have to use the thing first. Alright, first of all though, uh, what can you tell us about this thing in general? <laughs> Nothing unusual about that object, Captain. Really? That whole thing? This room is thoroughly fascinating, Captain. I theorize that this is a virtual space replica of the interior workings of the artificial intelligence which the phase represent. The interface is seamless, and work performed in here is functionally identical to working directly in the computer. Like so much we've seen before now that is highly advanced technology, yet archaic 20th century style wiring carries the electronic information. Huh, relying on wiring? What kind of world is this? I don't know what to say, Jim. This place is genuinely weird. Say what you just did, McCoy. Captain, this place is disturbing. Wur has been totally useless on this mission. She hasn't done anything. Of course, that's probably because I don't understand it. It's amazing how something that once seemed disturbing can become ordinary when you understand it. <laughs> I have a strange feeling about this room. We might find a lot of answers here. The primary reason we came aboard was to find a way to stop you from landing on top of our colony on Atipus, which would certainly kill thousands of our people. Now that your external senses are functional, have you altered your plans about where you intend to put the ship down? But who are we talking to, the ship computer? Are we talking to Puzzlewit? How did your systems become damaged? I'm curious about what your builders really had in mind, shipping off all these people off-planet. There seems to have been some shadier agenda. The eugenics wars of our own past produced some of the ugliest abuses in human history. And notorious characters like Khan Noonien Singh, whose name still resounds with infamy. How is this ship you call the Compassion justified? Okay, that, that was a big mouthful, Bones. Yes, it's only Kirk who's speaking for the party right now. Oh, man. I'd be interested to learn more about those who built this ship. Their achievements certainly seem erratic in sophistication, but much of it goes beyond even what we are capable of accomplishing today. For example, the Paralands medium for recording computer data is something we are only now beginning to explore. I think there's much to be learned from these people. That's all for now, FaZe. I assume we can talk to you if we have more questions. The primary reason we came aboard was to find yeah, a way yeah, to yeah. stop you from landing on top of our colony on Atipus. Yeah, yeah, no, Captain Kirk. I will certainly not set the compassion down in a populated area. Now that I can see it is there. I am at present in communication with the planetary authorities, and they are directing me to a stationary orbit until further arrangements can be made for my wards. Then are there other questions? Is the ship still set to land on Atipus Colony? No, Captain Kirk. Uh, then are there... Is the ship still... How did your systems become damaged? I am sorry I cannot explain this at this time. I do not even know if it is explicable. But I will search my memory for an answer for you. Thank you. Then are there other questions? Is the ship's... Please clarify the anomalies we have perceived while being on board. I am sorry, I cannot explain this at this... Then I'll... Is the ship still... Please... I'm curious about what you're building... I have no information about your eugenics wars. But a fundamental social philosophy of the Builders was that civilized people of goodwill would tolerate and value variability as a sign of cultural and social health. That a civilization will be judged by its tolerance of disparate ideas. Disparate. By how it treats those who cannot protect themselves, be they very young, very old, or otherwise challenged. By the measure of altruism extended to those less powerful, even when rightfully in possession of something desired. Yada yada yada. A central aspect of Vulcan philosophy is embodied in the Idic 
infinite diversity in infinite combinations. It would seem the builders pursued similar high ideals. High ideals, perhaps, but that does not explain why these people are in space phase. More than this, I cannot explain. However, you can locate additional library data under the heading Compassion. Compassion. Oh, I haven't made it available. I should have done that immediately. Yeah, what the hell, Faze? I can't imagine why I didn't think of it. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Take it easy. Fascinating, Captain. That instance of forgetfulness makes it possible to speculate that the phase is not wholly restored after all. Should I, should this have occurred after I put in the light bar and the wiring? Then are there other questions? Is the ship still set? Please, I'd still like to know a little more. I'd be interested to learn more about those who built this ship. My best recommendation is to examine the library records under Builders or Technology. There is more data than I can easily explain. Oh god, we're gonna get a whole heap of exposition. Then are there other questions? Is the ship still set? That's all for now. I would still like to learn more about these people. <laughs> is that no horror wants to do? That's all for now, Faze. I assume we can talk to you if we have more questions. Now wait one minute, cock. Whoa. I make my request politely and I am ignored. That cannot go unnoticed. When did you make I your request? The right to be heard. You didn't make a request, Clar. Please ask freely. I will answer as best I can. Please. This ship passed through the heart of Klingon space. We were not even aware of it until it was nearly out of our territory. We backtracked it and found it must have closely approached places we find sensitive. We expect assurances. That data you may have collected there will not reach the hands of those who mean us harm. We seek proof. We expect you to download your entire memory into our ship's computers, that we may search it for data you have no right to. Thereby would you not acquire data to which you have no right? My aid speaks too strongly. While it is true we are interested in the knowledge and technology you possess, technology to pass through our empire undetected, knowledge of how to twist space back upon itself, for that data, we will treat with you as one civilized people with another. But it is a justified request that we ask you to destroy all data dealing with anything you learn within our borders. Had I any data, I would agree to seal it. However, as you should have deduced, I have none. Until my sensory systems were repaired, my ability to receive and process data was severely impaired. Especially in regard to external data updates. Based on my present tree analysis of nearby space, I would speculate that my only data on your present sphere of influence would be as that area of space existed a very long time ago indeed. Yes. How insightful. That is information for us to know, not you. Erase it. Silence. Haze. We would welcome access to that information, but on the same basis as we would bargain with you for technological data, we have more to offer with you, I believe, than the Federation represented by these others. Yeah, this, this 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 aid is gonna get <laughs> this aid is gonna get hurt either by the phase or Kalar himself, but it's not gonna go well for him. Phase, do not be hasty making that decision. I lack sufficient data to make any assessment. I can give no answer at this time. I will do my best, Captain. Although intelligent entities often find that there are more questions than answers. Oh, thank God. All right, can we use the light bar finally? If you'll bring that over to me, I might have a better suggestion if I took a closer look at it. Is that needed? Wait, why didn't that work? Hang on. You, light bar. I failed to see them. If you'll bring that over. Do I really want to do that? I don't think so. The information I acquired from Puzzlewit's mind indicates this could be a delicate operation. Easily mishandled. <laughs> you think John's defected? Look, Dokar, oh God! 
I think we should start off with the connector. All right, so I guess we have to give it to them. What's the deal with these new things that are here? Is this a new thing? An unusual computer terminal device. Indeed. This room appears... No. Oh, this thing. This seems pointless. What? It's like a green thingy. Blinking. An iridescent crystalline lens about the size of your palm. Okay, that's the computer, right? Yeah. This machinery appears to be a read-only computer terminal. The configuration and construction seem quite unusual, to say the least. But evidently, the same kind of device we saw was damaged in the oratory. Mm -hmm. Although the lens magnifies things you look at through it, somewhat like a magnifying lens, the image is distorted and warped. Pretty soon, this seems like a non-productive way to use the paralens. Oh, I can't even scan it? Although the lens ma- Uh, fine, I'll give the bar to you, I guess. Light bar. You're just taking off the ends? I worked with things like these when I was younger. Even our surroundings, see if you don't find this more useful. <laughs> you just unscrew the ends to the, the light? Oh. We're not, we're not using the bar, we're just using the ends? The caps? A constructed mechanism permitting an electrical power supply to be safely joined to an appliance or device. <laughs> Spock's the one that suggested this as the connector. Shouldn't he, couldn't he have easily done this? Allow me, Captain. Let <laughs> me do that. The information I acquired from Puzzlewit's mind indicates this could be a delicate operation. Easily mishandled. I think you will find it fits just... Okay, I still don't know who Puzzlewit is. Who's Puzzlewit? Lieutenant Uhura, if you will bring over that length of wire while I hold this in place, I believe we can get this repaired speedily. Certainly, Mr. Spock. With that in place, I can see that it will easily fit. Here. Is this like... sex talk? <laughs> the final fit. connection is made, and Uhura smiles widely. Oh. Whoa. That's it! That fixes the broken connection. Yeah, it must be buggy. I don't remember. Thank uh, you. Puzzle with I am now once again whole and no longer an intelligence divided against myself. The system you repaired will re-enable me to analyze and update received data from external Yeah, I think this should have happened before. Systems. Altering conceptual constructs of previously acquired data. These systems appear to have been malfunctioning for some time. Although it will take additional review to clarify all conditions. Much may have been lost permanently. Okay, so if, if we need to redo this, we can subdue rack areas for opportunity, we can subdue rack a duck, uh, not via phaser. And we could also uh, mind meld with Puzzlewit, whoever that is. Maybe it's one of the idiot guys it seems like this should have happened before we started talking to her this seems bugged too as Jim do you notice the phase isn't switching between I and we like it did in the oratory and the voice is a single note not a harmonic chord of blended voices morbid SC2 thanks very much for the follow welcome and it hasn't suggested we go get something to eat either yeah I am chagrined that my disabilities have endangered my mission the compassion was launched with the best of intentions. If I can answer anyone's questions, I will endeavor to do so. Yeah, this should have been done before we have the discussion. Captain Kirk, you don't mind if I ask a question, do you? You'll get your turn, Klingon. Just hold your horses. Other things come first. Yeah, this is definitely, <laughs> this is definitely fun. Remember, I talked to Kirk. I did talk to Kirk. He made a comment, and then automatically we just started talking to the face. Be my guest, Captain. Ask away. You'll get your turn, Klingon. Just hold your- Be my guest, Captain. Ask away. That you give me first place to speak is a mark of honor, Captain Kirk. And does not pass unnoticed. Particularly in light of the urgency of your own questions. Hayes, this ship passed through the heart of yeah. Klingon space. We seek proof. Thereby which my aid speaks- Had I any doubt? That is silence. Phase do I lack Is the ship still set to land on Atopus Colony? That's all for now, Phase. I, I will do my best. Okay, yeah. Alright, so now can we use this thing? 
This palm-sized lens glitters like iridescent crystal. Uhura, doesn't this remind you of? Yes, Captain. This appears to be an intact paralens. The glass shards I noticed in the oratory are probably the broken remnants of others like this. Uh, I don't think you did notice any glass shards. Alright, how do we, um... Captain, this appears to be an unusual style of computer terminal. A reader device, most likely. Lieutenant Uhura, might not your recent study of experimental communication and decryption devices enable you to make a clearer assessment? <laughs> okay. Uhura, please use that. Captain, this appears to be an intact reader decryption device with mated computer terminal, just like the one we saw damaged in the oratory. Similar experimental designs coming out of the research labs of the Malafide Institute on Katabidi 3 have shown up in the most current technical journals. This is quite sophisticated. Okay. Can we have someone look up stuff in the computer? The repairs are complete here, Captain. This crystal construct has an unusual light scattering property. What? Captain, this appears to be an intact paralens, a nearly unique form of computer data recording media, quite advanced. The glass shards I noticed in the oratory are probably the broken remnants of others like this, but we should be able to read this. So why aren't we? Uh, oh, what is this? What is that blue thing? What is this? A somewhat small greenish blue blanket. Where the hell did we get this blanket from? Something definitely... Something definitely is bugged. We just picked up an object that we didn't even know we had? What the hell is this blanket doing? Coarsely spun organic fibers, twill woven, dyed dark brown post-construction. It is just under two meters square. So now we have a random blue blanket in our inventory? What the hell? No, I don't think that's necessary. Okay. Although the lens magnifies things you look at through it, somewhat like a magnifying lens, the Perfect. image is distorted and warped. Pretty soon, this seems like a non-productive way to use the paralens. How's it going, buddy? How's it going? Rufus got sheared for the summer. He's got no hair now, but he has no hair. All right, uh, is anyone cold and needs a blanket? So what the... Nothing to report, Captain. This room is thoroughly fascinating, Captain. All right, that's the same thing as before. Uh, I'm here as an observer. When I have something to say, I'll let you know. So where is this ship's com library computer we can use? Is that here? It's probably sturdier than it looks. What? It's probably sturdy. What is this? This looks almost identical to the containers oh. that house the Fae. No effect. You're talking about those. I'm talking about <laughs> this panel here. I do not believe I can directly interface with that, Captain. Captain, I hope you are not suggesting I attack this Klingon, neither verbally nor in an effort to render him unconscious. I also believe any attempt to mind melt with him would be inefficacious, to say nothing of being inappropriate. Inappropriate. <laughs> I do not. I do not. All right. So I don't know how to use this com this library computer the face suggested we use. Um, you get no response. You get no response. Talking to me. Kyle? I have a strange feeling about this room. We might find a lot of answers here. Is the ship still set to land? Please clarify the anomalies. I'd still like to know a little. I would still like to learn more about these people. My best recommendation is to accept all their other questions. questions. Now, just one minute, Phase. Are you listening? You keep saying you can't remember or you lack data or what have you. Even the library data seems what library data? incomplete and contradictory. If you don't know, then who does? Forgive the pause. I had to think long and hard to discover if you had correctly passed <laughs> what? this final test. Maybe we were supposed to go you south. You correctly again. identify the heart of the matter. Let me introduce you to my builders. It's a bit bugged. Is madness! Faze, what is this? Despite our misgivings, 
You have shown yourselves to be the representatives of space-faring peoples we, the Brassica, would most trust to make first contact with. The contest has been in progress for some time. Uh -oh. Situations in which your true colors have been explored. The invitation has been made. You may return to your ship if you prefer. Or you may step through whenever you are ready. Then the final round begins. Oh boy. I think you have it right, Captain Clar. This is madness, Jim. I think, Bones, it's Shakespeare who had it right. Though this be madness, yet there is a method in it. I agree with the sentiment, Captain Kirk. There is something more going on here, far deeper than first appearances have suggested. I imagine you will accept the invitation. I will certainly choose to go, whether you do or not. I believe the invitation is extended to all. I will not permit that, Captain Clark. I will take all methods to prevent you. I will not go. It is certainly a Federation trick. Yeah, you're an aide. That's insubordination. You begin to sound like Tuscan in the other room. Get a grip of yourself and act like an officer. Oh boy, things are heating up. Let's save. <laughs> uh, save new game. Da, 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 da. Delete. Re yep, up, 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 up. Save new game. Burn the Rasika. This appears to be a shimmering portal to some place else. Captain, I'm getting a thoroughly anomalous reading. This passage definitely defies the physical laws of space and time. Are you suggesting it might be some kind of space warping Where portal, Spock? The doors on this ship have given previous evidence of this kind of warping. Although the passages on this ship seem normal, they appear to curve space without resorting to hyperspace generation, like the Enterprise's engines. That represents achievements of technology beyond our own abilities. They certainly aren't as capable in the field of medicine. These people are suffering from genetic and chemical conditions that we've been able to treat for the last century. It's barbarous to pack them into this ill-conceived generation ship and hope by the time they make the return trip that those left behind will have figured out something more humane to do with them. Captain, if I may interject, that disparity is something we've glimpsed throughout this ship. There is a sophisticated food delivery system and a food-producing hydroponics garden. It is as if the parts of this ship don't fit together, or as if there were some purpose beyond the obvious. I was thinking the same thing myself, Lieutenant. I'd like to have a talk with whoever is behind this. And I also, Captain Kirk. I believe our observations have been as anomalous as yours. Moreover, I don't think the Fays are the ones we must address our questions to. Fays. I like this Captain Klar. I am determined to go explore. There may be dangers, but I accepted that challenge the first day I decided to make my life in space. I here, fear here. I have my doubts about my aid, however. I rather don't think he's a fit companion for this expedition. Put him down, put him down. I have no intention of letting my captain leave in your company through that hellish door. There's nothing you can say to change my mind, either. All right, stay home, man. Captain, this is a unique opportunity. I believe we must take this opportunity. I also believe that Captain Clara's presence will prove an asset. I am less than sanguine about Clara's aid accompanying us, however. Thanks for stating the obvious, Same man. to you, Vulcan. What are you going to do about it? Pinch me in the neck? <laughs> Indeed. Oh, we we definitely should try that. The lure of the unknown, Captain. That's what makes life worth living. It's why I joined Starfleet. A chance to communicate with other people, other places, strange new worlds. I don't believe we can turn our backs on this opportunity. You get no risk. No. Bones. I'm a little dubious, Jim, but that's what we're out here for in the first place. I say let's go for it. I even think this may be an interesting experiment in diplomacy to have the Klingon present on such an expedition. Although I must say, I'm not exactly overjoyed to spend any more time with the Captain Sour Mug Aid there. You're one to talk, you quack. <laughs> Maybe you'll hit me with your hypo and throw me out of the airlock, eh? That's what I'd expect of your sort. Alright, kind of seems like we do need to deal with the aid in some way. It, is the library over here? Where, where was this library? Data. Did I just miss it? An opaque hemispheroid through uh -oh. which nothing is visible. What the hell is this? 
There is nothing particularly interesting in an opaque bubble. It doesn't even reflect your image. No effect. The bubble seems to be part force field and part physical obstruction. Not quite like anything I've seen outside this room. If there is anything within, and I get no such reading, it is inaccessible. Okay. All right, well, let's. I guess we'll do it. Uh... Captain Clark, I will not let you depart. These human scum have tricked you. If I have to beat up all of you, I will. You, Vulcan, you understand orders. Help me knock out my mad captain, and I will take him away and out of your hair. Oh gosh, all right, so we better save. So we're gonna have to de deal with the save, save somehow. Save new game. Replace. So what are, what are our choices here? We got food, a blanket. We could smother him with our blanket. We could phaser him. Let's uh, scan first. Readings are normal. But before you get more than a moment's worth of readings, the Klingon captain notices and snarls. Yeah, oh, okay, so there's no way to actually pick that up. That just That's a buggy item all the time. At ease, Doctor. We don't want to start an incident here. Well, oh. Okay, I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> Thanks for taking care of him, Clark. I am determined to go explore. Then... All right, let's do it. <laughs> okay, we, he made that decision, not us. Use violence. Uh, Mr. Scott, they disappeared off the sensors. Oh, okay, yeah, we probably should have communicated with the Enterprise. <laughs> Oops. What do you mean, laddie? They've just vanished. Uh. Yet there is method in it. Oh, is this the final episode? Captain's log, stardate 6269.3. The landing party and the Klingon Captain Clark have passed through a portal in time and space. We're about to face tests by the Brassica. Success will mean formal relations. Failure will mean... unknown. Unknown. Okay, so yeah. Though there is be madness, yet there is madness in it. Or, wait. Though this be madness, yet there is madness in it. All right, yeah, I guess this, it, I guess this is, we, we didn't really get a score for the last one, but I guess it's like a combo. It's like a combo mission, sort of. But yeah, it seems pretty clear this is the episode eight. Yes. All right, uh, we have to do some Brassica tests, okay? We gotta succeed in these tests. Welcome. We applaud your willingness to confront the unknown. Thank you, Brassican. Please tell us what's going on. Where are we? Patience. I cannot answer all yet. Those elements of our society still ill at ease with your cultures have more questions. Oh? We've had enough. No more foolish tests. More tests. Let's just get on with it. I'd like to hear what the others think. We've had enough. No more foolish tests. I'd like to hear what the others think. Yeah. I will withdraw until you address me again. Thank you. Thank you. And look at the space here. The communications officer carefully controls her reactions and observes everything. Yeah, it does look like Tetris, doesn't it? <laughs> a quite alien looking being, its greenish skin hinting a plant phylogeny. Large eyes set well to either side of the head suggest a creature whose ancestors were more prey than predator. A third central eye augments 3D vision. A vibrating tympanum looking like an open mouth is the sound-producing organ. The brightly colored combs on its head might be personal adornment, rank significators, or tribal markings. A Klingon self-assured in his power yet not arrogant. His expression is unreadable. The science officer is intrigued but wary of an area which fails to conform to the precepts of Euclidean space. The captain seems edgy, alert to danger. The doctor is queasy from the bizarre distortion of space around him. A sophisticated projected image similar to those on Onius 2. It's not a living thing, Jim. Spock's tricorder is more useful here. 
Not living? I thought it was an alien. Brassica. What the deuce? All right, so there are no other hotspots here, though, huh? We're all in, like, kind of different blocks and such. Yeah, that's kind of it. All right, let's... Oh, wait, no. There's something here? It was just... Oh, wait, no, there's something. Just space. One of the strangest projections you've ever seen. system is projecting these images, Captain. I speculate the Brassican heroes, the Gerent, confronted surreal perils. What? All right, let's talk to people. The Brassica are calling the tune and expecting us to dance, Captain. It might be undignified, but all of us can make valid, responsible choices and stand by the consequences. Captain, even though isolated, the Brassica are quite advanced. It's certain their insights will be unusual and enlightening. The logical course is to establish a dialogue. I am grateful you included me, Captain. Representing the Klingon Empire, I believe we must not be cowed. Oh. Passivity may be regarded as undesirable to them. But you always gotta be cowed. If I was meeting us, I'd be skittish too. We've gone this far, there's no sense in quitting now. Everyone alright? <laughs> no one responds. Alright, definitely need to save here, right? Okay. Save uh, new game. Repl delete. Save new game. Uh, eight. Start. Okay. Oh. Captain Kirk, I am here. Are you ready? Our mandate is to seek out new life, new civilizations. If we must do so, on your terms, we will. Explain yourself. We're not rats to run mazes. We deserve to know what you want. We welcome contact with the new race, but you try our patience. No more tests or we'll leave. How could that now, possibly turn out well? Our mandate is to seek out new life. Listen, we have modified our legends by what we understand of your species. You will be asked a question and may discuss it. Only one person may answer. Begin. So you'll be asked a question, and you can discuss it among everybody, but only one person gives the answer? It's like a group task, but only one person speaks for the group. What? I make the first query. It is that question posed to the heroic companions we call the Gerent. Answer this. Who among you may go to the greatest pains in the pursuit of life? You may talk. I will withdraw until you choose to speak with oh, me. God. Remember, only one of you may reply. Let's do some talking. I believe I'm the obvious answer to this question. I'm a ship's captain. 430 lives depend on me, on my every decision. Our mission is, in part, to seek out new life, new civilizations. So it comes down to me. So, half... Vulcans are the same species as humans? Stupid vomit salads. <laughs> is that your vessel for your bits? Now, I don't understand. Wait, he said Gerens? Are you referring to us as the Gerens? The heroic companions or something? By the way, the question, what, what was the question? Um, who, who among you is going to face the most pain in their lives? That was the question. Am I any different? Does not my crew live or die on my decisions? I explore space for the Klingon Empire! The Starship Captain stands as representative of the United Federation of Planets. Many races, whose goals and visions for the future are pursued together. Who shoulders the greater weight, Captain Clark? No one has ever accused you of modesty, Kirk. See it as you will. You, surrounded by your fellow humans and officers, or me, the sole representative of my empire. Um, thank you. Who among you may go to the greatest pains? In the pursuit of life. Okay. The Brassican's question is not, properly speaking, a riddle. A riddle has a right and a wrong answer. This is more philosophical, with many possible answers. Then how can we possibly answer correctly, Spock? Or can we? One answer will seem more satisfactory than all others, Captain. At least we can eliminate you, Spock, from this horse race. I don't see any right answer for you to be the person who would go to the greatest pain in the pursuit of life. On the contrary, Doctor. Respect for all living things is fundamental to Vulcan philosophy. A rigorous adherence, unlike humans' variable justification. Yeah, but how does that mean greatest, uh, pains? You aren't suggesting, Spock, that you're the right choice. I believe I may be, Doctor. The 
Brassicans may agree. Indeed. I may not be Vulcan, but I'm the logical choice. Who goes through more pains in pursuit of life than a doctor? <laughs> Gentlemen, I think you may be overlooking a fundamental difference between me and everyone else here. I am the only female, the only one capable of bringing mm -hmm. forth new mm -hmm. life. Yeah. That qualifies me as the one among us who might go to the greatest pains in the pursuit of life. Yeah, actually, like literally speaking, as far as like physical pain, she's absolutely right. So I'm prepared to go with Uhura. I mean, unless they, they're talking about other forms of pain, but physical pain, she definitely has everybody else be. That's for damn sure. Jim, it's evident that each of us believes we're the right choice. I'm reasonably sure I'm the person they have in mind. But I can see everyone can make a case for themselves. As indeed we have, Doctor. I fail to see how further discussion will alter the situation. Either you must come to some decision, weighing the strength of individual opinions, or I get some hints out of our green host. Yeah. What about to Clark? I am the right choice, Kirk, and I'm certain you understand why. All right. Let's go, Uhura. We have our answer. Are you ready to hear it? We have questions to ask. Ah, you can ask him. We have our answer. Are you All ready right, to hear it? Do Uhura. Let the one who would answer be the next one to talk. Uhura. I don't have anything to add, Captain. What? No. You're the next one to talk. No. What the hell? I don't have anything to add. <laughs> Choose the next one to talk. We have our answer. Are you ready to hear it? We have questions to ask. Wait, we have to ask questions then? Very well. Ask. What consequences result from an incorrect answer? That's actually a good question. The overall test will likely continue, Captain. This is one phase, and we are examining oh, the whole. So if we don't if we don't do this whole test right, we might have to replay this several times. And we're not gonna have instant feedback to know which questions were right and which ones were wrong. Damn. What if I were to declare that there's not one right answer, but many? There is just one answer we would consider wholly correct. Oh, Captain correct. Kirk. In reality, you expect us to answer two questions. What we think is right, and what you think is right. What consequences would you are clearly a race of what consequences would you are clearly a race who values? What consequences was you are clearly a race who values fairness? Oh, that was the answer. Shouldn't we have more information before we try to answer. Very well. No. It was agreed they shouldn't be given special assistance. Voice. Their complaint is valid. Different species think differently. A hint seems appropriate. They're giving it to me. I didn't ask for it. <laughs> they must show the faculties to think through problems. Well, Captain, are you positive oh, you want a hint? Yes, get on with it. No, don't bother. We'll give our answer now. Hey, I don't need it yet. Let the one who would answer be the next one to talk. So how do I select her? Use. I'm going to use you, Uhura. Alone among the people go. here, I am female and capable of childbearing. <clears throat> the nurturing of a new life remains a uniquely female labor. Certainly, I am the one among us who might go to the greatest pains in the pursuit of life. Zebra. Your answer is accepted. However, Damn it. this is not to say whether this answer is right or wrong. All right, we got to keep track of this. So question one, we said Uhura. We, are gonna, we don't get any feedback, though. Where is he gone? The next question awaits, Captain. Oh, so you can only answer one person for each question, probably. <clears throat> you are nothing like the Jared, who holds a special place in our memories. The second question. Who among you wrestles most intensely with the chaos of life? Talk amongst yourselves. I would say either Spock or McCoy. I questions if I can. In the end, only one may reply. As with the previous question, this is a question of judgment, Captain. Meaning there's no right or wrong answer. I suspect that Brassica would disagree with you, Captain. There is likely a specific answer they expect. I can only speculate. And? Each of us can best make his or her own case. As science officer, I believe myself likely. It is the very heart of science to attempt to comprehend the fundamentally chaotic nature of the universe. I think that's probably right, but let's see what the other what the other cases are. Chaotic? If the universe wasn't ordered, we couldn't make sense of it, Spock. As you are certainly aware, Doctor, chaos defines the very nature of patterns. However, <laughs> this does not mean random. 
Well, that may be. On the other hand, I would be the last person to say a Vulcan wrestles with any concept. And don't you raise your eyebrow at me, <laughs> Spock. Uh, unibrow? Spock's on the right track, Jim, but he's still wrong. I focus on the chaos of life. He chaos? struggles more chaos? than a physician. Made some sense, McCoy. And I've heard you were a humble country doctor. Sounded more like a Vulcan. No need to be insulting. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, we've had enough chaos to deal with. Interesting analysis, Bones. However, I think I might be the one the Brassica have in mind. Why so? It's obvious you have never spent time among Klingons, Kirk. The life of the warrior is the struggle between control and chaos. I recognize your position, Clark. And if you thought the same as me, I'd have second thoughts. But I don't. As captain of the Enterprise, I'm responsible for the lives of everyone on board. Without a strong hand at the tiller, it would be complete chaos. Sounds Those like bullshit. demands make me the best answer. I think I'm the one who should answer. I'm still open to differing opinions, so let me hear them. The course of my life as a Klingon of repute is proof I am the one to answer. You get no response. Just give me a minute, you broke my train of thought. <laughs> Comprehending chaos is more work than one lifetime. That is the reason I believe I am the answer to who wrestles most intensely with the chaos of life. Yeah. Can, can I phone a friend? This lifeline. All right. Let's go. Let's go. We are go ready spot. with our answer now. We have questions. We are ready with our answer now. Let the one who. It is the heart of science to seek an understanding of the universe and its laws, to make sense of what seems randomly chaotic. In the effort to extract comprehension from the unknown, I work to recognize the underlying patterns for which life represents the greatest challenge. Thus, I am the one among us who wrestles most intensely with chaos. Your answer is accepted, Commander Spock. However, this is not to say whether this answer is right or wrong in our sight. You expect me to stand by while my people keep disappearing? The next question awaits, Captain Kirk. <clears throat> Congratulations, Captain. There are those among us. Are we doing well? Who doubted you could make it this far. The third question is somewhat different. But our heroes, the Gerund, found the answer. Solve this equation. Okay. Pig plus X equals cow. What? Talk among yourselves. I will answer questions if I can. Only one may reply. Wow. So what do you have to add to a pig to get a cow? All right, Nox, I'm interested to hear your, your thoughts on this subject. <laughs> what do you add to a pig to get a cow? Oh my gosh. How to solve Tlok Poch plus X equals Sogak Nof? Not the sort of problem I'm used to. What are you saying? The question was pig plus X equals cow. The answer knocks. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting, Kirk. I heard Tlok Poch plus X equals Sogak Nav. To humans, it would translate to plant plus X equal hive paper. Hive paper? What did you hear, doctor? Oh, this is actually interesting. So it's like different to the book. Let's see if Bones heard something different. Well, I heard peace plus X equals home. Wow. <laughs> McCoy sounds like, he, like he's like dying. Peace plus X equals home. Which one do we answer? The answer lies in the relationship of the questions. Maybe it's the same for the all three. Relationship between the plant, peace, and a pig, or between high paper, home, and a cow. 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 Clar, if you can make that connection, you're a better man than I. Goes without saying, Dr. McCoy. I am a Klingon. I'm not impressed, Clar. The Braska addressed me first. I think we need to answer pig plus X equals cow. <laughs> Just take it. If there's only one answer, it should be sensible. Mine is straightforward. Peace and quiet makes a happy home. It's almost a cliche. Reason enough to discount it. Yeah, this seems like clear you wouldn't do all three. Your candor is appreciated. I trust we'll have achieved some understanding before we have to answer. They're only going to let one of us answer. Okay. You get no yeah. response. Pretty strange, Jim. But 
My question seems obvious. The X of peace plus X equal home has got to be quiet. Yeah, I think you're right. Pig's pl pig plus X equals cow. I think that's it. <laughs> uh, absolutely right. Getting more than one question confuses things. I still have a gut feeling that pig plus X equals cow is the one. The answer must be something about shifting the letters. I'll get it in another minute. Assume my question is the one to answer. Counting each letter of the words from its place in the alphabet, the equation 32 plus X equals 41 results. The answer is nine, and since I is the ninth letter, I is the answer to pig plus X equals cow. Uh, uh. Captain, I like self-assurance, but your belief you are always the answer is pitiful. Why use a human alphabet when not all here are human? You will notice, Clara, that I have the only arithmetically derived answer. I am convinced the correct answer solves for all the questions. Yeah, that seems like the best. I am certain that is the logic for this puzzle. If that is only half an answer, so be it. Yeah, so that's the problem, is that we don't know, we don't know what the common X is that would work for all three. He's not providing that. Still probably the best of the three. I am convinced the... Pretty strange, Jim. Assume my question. All right, let's go with Clar. I don't know. It's only half, I agree, but since... Whatever he said... Yeah, I don't know. Let's actually do... Uh, Let's do a new save here. Actually. Save new cancel. Because they did say congratulations, suggesting that we had the first game. we had the first two answers were correct almost. Save new game. Big cow. All right, uh, talk. We are ready with our answer. Now. Actually, can we ask some questions? questions? Very well. Ask. If you tell us more about the gerund, maybe we can figure out what they would have answered. The questions we ask have been suitably modified to allow for differences between your people and ours. Mm. Is there something else? We are ready with our answer now. Oh, there's a, there's a photo. Aww, nice photo, I like it. Pig plus cow, there's a big eye in there. I want to get back to a different question. We'll talk it over and get, we are ready. I want to get back to a different question. Very well, ask. If you tell us more, can you give us a hint? Can you at least tell us if we've been answering you correctly so far? Answers that have been accepted have been Accepted. No. More I cannot say. Have you other questions? We are ready with. I want to get back to a different question. Very well. If you tell us, can you give a. Can you at least tell us? Please repeat the original question. If you tell us more, please repeat the original question. The question I asked you was to solve this equation pig plus x equals cow. Have you others? We are ready with our answer now. Let the one who would answer be the next to speak. Pilar. It's definitely not Kirk, because then Kirk would disappear and he's supposed to be who you're playing as. So. I am convinced the correct answer solves for all the questions. I am certain that is the logic for this puzzle. Uh, if that is only half an answer, so be it. Why couldn't he... <clears throat> uh, why couldn't he at least, like, make a guess? You have answered two of our questions incorrectly. Oh. This indicates to us that you are too different from us. Wow. We shall attempt this again some other time. You shall all be returned to your ship. I'm surprised. I thought we really, I thought we got the first two right. We failed. So now what happens? So we did get one of them right. But who knows We're back on the Enterprise. Probably the fact that none of those three had any like good answers for the pig cow one. That probably would have like help us. It feels like we've been dreaming. It is logical to assume we shared the same experience. Unless the Brassica have psionic abilities they did not demonstrate. Captain Kirk, I grieve to say that your answers were beyond our ability to tolerate. Nice. We had hoped for better from your species. Ouch. Uh, you should not judge any species from just one sample. The captain is correct. It would be most illogical to make a decision based on such limited data. Our data is broad enough. In the future, perhaps our species might form a bond of friendship. But for now, we must remain apart. Farewell. Message from Starfleet, Captain. I reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain. 
and have a few comments. That could be good. I'll be frank, Kirk. <laughs> Starfleet expects more out of you than that. If I were you, I'd do some serious soul searching about my command ability. I would expect as much from a cadet, but from Starfleet's finest. I'm going to have to forward my concerns to command. Kane out. So we got a four. <laughs> Another message from Starfleet. <laughs> On screen. Jen, we have evaluated your current series of missions. I hate to say it, but you're lucky you've done as well as you have. We found numerous lapses of judgment. Yeah. I expected better. Yes, Admiral. When this mission is over, we should schedule some time for a refresher course. The Academy Simulator isn't just for cadets, you know. I agree, Admiral. That's all, Jim. Starfleet out. I wonder what he'd say if he were in the command chair. He's right, Bones. The moment Starfleet standards start to slip is the moment the Federation is in trouble. Agreed, Captain. Triumphs achieved without an adequate standard are hollow and meaningless. I suppose we could have done better. And we shall, Bones. We shall. Did they just leave that big old chip there? Yeah, I know, Rufus, it's a bad ending. Uh. <laughs> GG. What? <laughs> what? Why is it? Why is it? Yeah, so that's a, I, I, We gotta put that as a bad end. Surprised they don't, um. No, to previously yeah. say. Pig Cow. Alright, so we have to go before Pig Cow, I think. All right, give me one second then. Let's uh, pause here because buys are open. I have to take a quick bio break. I'm not even going to put it on the BR bit, B screen. I just need to take a quick bio break. We'll have buys open. With them. And then we'll try to figure this out. All right. Um. Okay, no boss. Kirk, we expected move from you. Everyone knows the answer to pig plus x equals cow. Oh yeah, what's that? <laughs> that's that's the million dollar question, right? Okay. All right. The good news is, is it's gonna be pretty easy to um, retry some of this. Like, uh, and by easy, I mean like fast as well. Tie fire wing. I was actually thinking I might need to get a new chair because this wasn't quite like the lumbar support that I was hoping for. This chair that I've had about a year and a half now. Good ish game. All right, so the first one was. Uh, well, let's just talk. Captain Kirk, I our mandate is to seek out new life. New. Listen. I make the first query. 
is that question posed to the heroic companions we call the... All right, so the question... I think we want to change one... We're kind of going to kind of know by using... Um, who had the... I think I want to stay with... Uh, I don't know, both Uhuru and Spock seemed like very far beyond each of the other options for each of their respective questions. Uh, <clears throat> let's go Uhura here again, and then we'll try Spock there, okay. We have our answer, are you ready? Let the one who... So let's do Uhura again, but we'll change... Uh, Alone among the people. No we'll, answer is accepted. We'll try uh, a different person in Spock. The next question. So the first run was. You are nothing like the Jared. Hold a special place in our memories. The second question. Who among you wrestles most intensely with the chaos of life? Alright, what was Bones's um, thing here? Jim, I can't help feeling this question is directed at me. I can't explain exactly. Let me think about it a bit. Well, that's not very convincing. Just give me a minute. You broke my train of thought. Just give me a minute. It's obvious you have never spent time among Klingons, Kirk. The life of the warrior is the struggle between control and chaos. The course of my life as a Klingon of repute is proof I am the one to answer. The course of my life as a... I, I don't think it would be Kirk for any of them. I recognize your position, Clark. And if you thought the same as me, I, as captain of the Enterprise, I'm... As with the previous question... Meaning there's... I suspect that Brassica would... And? Each of us can best make his or her own... Chaotic, as you are certain... Well, that may be, or... Just give me a minute, you... Alright, so he never even comes up with an answer, so it doesn't seem like it would be McCoy at all. So, I guess let's go Clar here. The course of my life... I think I'm the one who should answer... Just give me a minute, Yeah, McCoy never comes up with a response. Comprehending chaos is... Just give me a minute. All right, maybe... Yeah. We are ready with our answer now. What, what was that? <laughs> chaos, right? We have question. We are ready with our... Let the one... All right, let's go Klar, then. My people have a tradition of controlled chaos, which test our metal, our strength of will and body. I rose to captaincy of the Pau Yard by being able to ride the wild kick, as we say. There is no doubt in my mind that I am the one who struggles most intensely yeah, he did, with the didn't chaos he? Like, of life. About medical stuff? Yeah, I probably should have gone the Your answer is accepted. What have you done with him? The next question away. Now we get to see what at least McCoy's thought is on Big Cow. Congratulations. Who doubted you could make it this Uh, I don't even know which one is which. What kind of question is peace plus x equal? What are you saying? The gem, chicken plus x <laughs> equals reality. That's great. Chicken plus x equals reality. Which one do we answer? Maybe only one has an answer, a good answer. Your equation didn't say anything about happy bones. They addressed me as the sent captain. You hear one question. I hear another. None are sensible. Logic dictates identifying the pattern. Mm. I believe the Brassica expect us to realize there is no pattern. Specifically, there is no answer. Your candor is appreciated. I trust we'll have achieved some understanding before we have to answer. Alright, yeah, Spock definitely They're has They're only the... going to let one of us answer. Yeah, so it seems like Spock is probably the best. Captain, you hear one... That's the way. Getting more than one question confuses things. I still have a gut. Assume my question. What is that? Pretty strange, Jeff. All right, yeah, let's go with uh, Spock in this one. We are ready with our answer now. Let the one who would answer be the next to speak. Uh, the question I heard was chicken plus X equals reality. This question is nonsensical. As is Captain Kirk's. Ah, but Therefore, McCoy's I is. The answer is that there is no answer. Yeah, that's probably why McCoy has to be the second choice. And then, um, <clears throat> what's his name? Clars doesn't make sense either. Which was plant plus X equals hive paper. Something like that. So maybe uh, maybe the three answers are Uhura, McCoy, then Spock. Your answer is accepted. 
You plan to make off with everyone? Do you really expect me to keep taking that without protest? The next question awaits, oh. Captain Kirk. Okay. So, we got farther than we did the last time. I am astonished that an alien like you has muddled Thanks, your way this far. It is a great honor that we share the Riddle Master's questions to the Gerent. The last question, answer this. There are two present. Only one may go. Why should you be the one to leave this place alive? Discuss this. I will answer questions if I can and will. You might want to discuss this with me to explore your options. I will, thank you. I will. Hey, Alpha. Echo Alpha. Bones, I could use your advice. This situation is unacceptable. What would happen if I asked the Brassica for an alternative? Bones, I could use your advice. Jim, the decision is pretty obvious. I'm a simple country doctor. You're not. Let me take my chances. You know Kirk has to rescue, you know, uh, he has to sacrifice himself, go down with the ship, and uh, yada, yada, yada. No starship captain has ever had a better crew. The hard decisions are mine, and I thank you for reminding me of that. You want me to choose one of us or the other. Well, frankly, I don't want to risk either of us. I want another alternative, another choice. No starship captain has ever had a better crew. The hard decisions are mine. You want- Jim, they're asking us to choose one to live and one to die. But one of us has to go on or it's all in vain. No, that's it. We changed the rules. Right now, they're offering one to live and one to die. And if the Brassica don't offer this option? Whether they offer it or not, that's what we choose. It won't matter which of us answers. This is a high stakes game, Jim. You know how I love a good bluff. Let's hope the Brassica can't see your car. No, I actually wanted to have Kirk sacrifice himself, so McCoy be's the one to answer to live. But... <clears throat> good idea, Jim. I don't think we got a better hand to play. Good idea, Jim. Captain's job is a continuous series of life or death decisions. It's not a burden I can share. I trust you'll understand if I make the decision for both of us. This situation is unacceptable. Captain's job is cont I know you'll do what's needed, Jim. Yeah, that's We're ready with our answer. We have questions to ask. Ask your question. Would you repeat the original question, just as you asked it? Yeah, why not? The question I posed was this. There are two of you present. Only one of you may go. Why should you be the one to leave this place alive? Anything else? Well, they don't say the other one's gonna die. The other one just stays here alive. <laughs> Why not? Only one can go, the other one can remain, but continue to live. We're ready with our answer. I want to talk with my associates. We'll get back to I want to get back to a different question. Ask your question. Would you repeat? Why should you want to prevent one or the other of us from leaving here? I did not mention anything about preventing individuals from leaving. I simply asked why, given that only one of you may, mm. you should be the one to leave. Okay. Do not be obtuse. The captain's question is legitimate. Captain Kirk, his answer is nevertheless cogent. There is nothing about the question itself which states that someone will be prevented from leaving. However, you are being asked to justify your continued existence preferentially to your companion's continued existence. Uh -huh. I want to talk with my... I want to get... Hypothetical questions. I want to get back to a different question. Ask your question. Would you repeat the... Why should you... Is there anything we might do that would win a hint to the type of answer you're expecting? Perhaps something that would indicate a real choice? Would you repeat the... Is there anything... No, Captain. Ask all the questions you wish. If you think that will help. Beyond that... Why should we expand upon the question when it is such a straightforward query? We're ready Quite with our answer. I want to talk. I want to get back. We're ready with our answer. Wait, wasn't there another option? I want to get back to a different. Ask your. Would you repeat the original? Is there anything we? Why should mm. you want to? Would you repeat the? The question. I We're ready with our answer. Mm. Let the one who would answer be the next one to talk. So this is the person who's going to be the one to leave. I think it's McCoy. All right, McCoy. I'm a doctor, not a diplomat. Captain Kirk is the no. one person here no, who is indispensable. Shit. He has to be the one to be allowed to leave this room. No, I wanted... Damn it. Then I should have chosen Kirk. All right. No. An unusual reply, Dr. McCoy. The one who speaks might have been interpreted to be the one who justifies his continuation. Therefore, I must ask you, Captain oh, Kirk, thank you. if you accept Dr. McCoy's answer. 
Uh, I do not accept the answer. It pains me enormously to forsake any member of my crew, but I agree with Bones. If only one of us proceeds, then it has to be me. No, actually, I believe it's more important for Bones to be the one to carry on from here. My decision as captain is that he should do so. I don't like your questions, and I don't like you. This is no choice. <laughs> to perhaps let my crewmen die so I might live and carry on, there must be some other alternative. It pains me enormous. No, actually, I... All right, let's go straight forward. For bones ...to be the one to carry on from here. My decision as captain is that he should do so. We'll go straight forward, but then that third one is probably the next one we'll try. You are the leader, Captain Kirk. Asking another to undertake fulfillment of your responsibilities indicates to us that you, as a leader, cannot distinguish between what is yours no. and what is properly another's. The meeting of our two races must necessarily await another time. You will I, all be safely returned to your own people. I didn't understand the nature of the thing. I wanted, I wanted to meet again. Yeah. All right, it had have been Kirk. God damn it. All right. <laughs> Alright, so it's another death. What is that supposed to mean? I guess it means we'll all look back on this yep. as a mistake. True, Dr. McCoy. I believe our peoples will come together in the future. But now is not the future. Uh, okay, so I wanted... Uh, I wanted Kirk to make the choice. I, I, I had wanted Kirk to make the choice, but I thought that... They were asking for who should who should leave, uh, live and leave, and therefore that's why I had McCoy answer. I didn't realize that they wanted the person answering to make the choice, which is so it's just annoying. Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, so it's gonna be another death. <clears throat> Captain's log, start date sixty-two seventy point five. We, I have failed in our mission to make formal contact with the Brassica. My answer was responsible for the Brassica rejecting diplomatic relations with the Federation. The Klingon ship is leaving orbit. They didn't even say goodbye. <laughs> they did display considerable anger. All right, so it's, it's actually a different ending. I can't blame them, Mr. Spock. Message from Starfleet, Captain. I reviewed your report. I'll be frank, Kirk. Starfleet yeah, expects thing. another message. On screen. Jen, we have evaluated your current series of missions. I hate to say it, but you're lucky you've done as well as you have. <laughs> we found numerous lapses of judgment. I expected better. Yes, Admiral. When this mission is over, yeah. we should schedule... I agree, Admiral. That's all, Jim. I wonder what he... He's right, Bones. Agreed, Captain. I suppose... And we shall... It's a slightly different... Okay. Let's Load a previously saved game. Big, uh... No, I'm sorry. Our mandate is to seek out. Listen. All right, so let's just go the same for. Well, uh, this time we'll go Kirk. I make the first query. It is that. Qu it might turn out you have to do. Um, <clears throat> we have our answer. Are you ready to hear it? Let the. You might have to do that third weird option where he refuses. It. Alone among the. Your answer is accepted. Where is he gone? The next one. Yeah, exactly. You get one wrong. You are nothing like. Well, probably because we got like a zero out of four for the mission or something. Jim, I can't help feeling. Yes. Yeah, so how do we get him to? As with the previous. Meaning there's. No I suspect. And each of us can chaotic, as you are certain. But that may be. Just give me a minute. You Let me explain. A captain sailing the emptiness of space. Lives that rely on your every word. I thought that too, Kirk. It is not sufficient. I disagree, Clark. Without a strong hand at the tiller, shipboard life would dissolve into chaos. Those demands make me the best answer. Just give me a minute. Come on, man. Come on, it's obvious face. you have never spent the course of my life at comprehending. I think I'm the one. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. You call you, sir. All right. Let's, uh, <clears throat> we are ready with our answer now. Let the one. All right, so we got far enough with Clark here. So. My people have a tradition of. We got Your to the last question, is... so. We'll just do the same what set. What have you done with him? The next question. You might. 
Congratulations. Who doubted you could... We are ready with our answer now. Let the one... Okay, Spark. At face value, this question... What do you say? Continue your discussion. Then... Jim, I heard quite chicken. Which one do we... Maybe only one... Your equation... To Captain, you... Your candor is appreciated. They're only going... The question I heard... Your answer is accept. You plan to make off with everyone? The next question. Okay, here we go. I am astonished that an alien like you has muddled your way this far. It is a great honor that we share the Riddle Master's questions to the Gerrant. The last question, answer this. There are two present. Only one may go. Why should you be the one to leave this place alive? Maybe... Discuss this. I will answer questions if I can, and it, will. Yeah. You might want to discuss... Well, they gave us the reasoning that the captain was weak for not doing it, so... Jim, the decision is... No starship captain has ever had a... You want me to choose one of us. No starship captain has ever had a... Um, yeah, let's just do what we're gonna do. It could be that you have to do, choose that third option where, like, oh, I refuse to answer this question. Oh. oh, shoot, yes, the timer. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Uh, how long have we been since... I was in break? Actually, I could kind of, uh add some time here um, that's when I stepped away right it's kind of after yeah sort of after the GG's yeah it was about 9.42 that's it alright so it was like 18 minutes All right, there we go. All right, thank you for the catch roll. We're ready with our answer. Let the one who... I'm captain of the Enterprise, and this is a member of my crew. It is not even a matter of discussion of who should proceed or who should stay behind. It pains me enormously to forsake any member of my crew, but if only one of us can proceed, then it has to be me. I can't think of any better person to continue this mission than the one standing here with me. My decision, as captain, is that my crew member should be the one to proceed onward. Meaning proceeding onward back to the ship, or remaining here? They don't even make it clear. Like, I don't even know what I'm answering. You want me to choose one of us, or the other. Well, frankly, I don't want to risk either of us. I want another alternative, another choice. He's gonna say life isn't about alternatives. I can't think of any better person to- You are the leader, Captain Kirk. Asking another what? to undertake fulfillment of your responsibilities. <laughs> so I answered the same thing? Us that you, as a leader, cannot distinguish between what is yours oh, no. and what is properly another's. The meeting of our two races that was the same necessarily answer. await another time. You will all be safely returned to your own people. Alright, <laughs> this is not written very well. Until our peoples meet again. Okay. Last time, he seemed to have dinged me because um, Bones answered, right? So fulfillment of your responsibilities. Does it not matter who's the one answering? I thought proceeding onward meant proceeding to the ship. So I wanted McCoy to proceed. What? All right, I don't understand. There are like three layers to the question about who's answering and does proceeding mean going home or going to the ship? Like... Or staying here, and I don't, I don't know why. The response was, and since Bones moves forward, he's taking over. What? Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> I really don't understand. They asked Kirk if he accepted the answer, and Kirk said, "No, Bones should go. No, go on." What's that supposed to mean? Yeah, what is that supposed to mean? I guess it means we'll true, Doctor. Oh my God! What the f All right, I have to. I have to pay very. I have to pay very close attention to how they word the question. Then, I just skipped through it to choose the other option. I thought the the problem was that we had Kirk and uh, Bones answer the first. The Klingon ship. They didn't even say good. They did. I can. Oh my God! Load a previously saved. 
All right, we just needed to make a new save, I guess. That's the other problem. I chose the same answer. Captain Kirk. Our mandate is to seek out new life, new civilizations. If we must do so, listen. All right, I gotta make a new save. That was the problem. I make the first query. I thought <clears throat> I did choose the same answer, but I thought he penalized us the last time because uh, we didn't choose the responsibility. Uh, we made McCoy take the responsibility of answering and making the choice. But now they're saying, like, so I, I don't know. That's really annoying. Alone among. Your answer is accepted. Where is he gone? The next. You are nothing like the. Okay. Cool. My people have a tradition. Your answer is. What have you done with him? The next. It might have been um. McCoy, Congratulations, second, and then, doubted you could. and then Spock. And then Clark and Spock at the end would have been good. You know what? That's probably it. And then Clark dies. Hang on a second. I want to try something. Let's try something here. Captain Kirk. Our mandate is to see. Listen. I want to try something. I make the first. Alone among. Your answer I do. is ex. Let's Where use um, McCoy here. The next one. Let's see what he says. Put something out. You are nothing. I think, because I think it makes sense for Clara to sacrifice himself so everyone gets on the Enterprise on the way home or something. I am a physician. I am the one who cares for life and health of hundreds aboard the Enterprise. The patterns of chaos are the patterns of life and death, and every day of my professional life is focused on balancing those patterns towards sustaining the quality of life. I am the one among us who struggles most intensely with the chaos of life. Your answer is accepted, Doc. Okay. You expect me to stand by while the next question awaits. Congratulations. Who doubted you could make? Just kind of want to see. We need to think. I'm sure we can work out the trick they're posing with this question. Pig plus X equals cow. What are you saying? Interesting, Kirk. Uh, chicken. Each question starts with something edible. Pigs and chickens are farm stock, are they not? Many elements of Federation society do not consume animal flesh, Captain Clark. In principle, however, you are correct. But I believe the answer is, there is no logical answer. I don't think so, Spock. But I don't like yours either, Clark. Where's the relationship between a cow, hive paper, and reality? Difficult, I admit, Kirk. But they must be connected. I'm not impressed, Clark. The Braska addressed me first. I think we need to answer pig plus X equals cow. You try my patience, Kirk. There's a pattern and an answer. A talk, talk. Grows a flower that ka cha insects visit, and ka cha make nectar and hive paper, so flower would work. And what does that do for my question or spots? Your officer was asked to solve chicken plus X equal reality. The philosophers of Bolare Seven maintain a celestial bird, something like a chicken laid an egg from which the universe hatched. The idea of reality began as something egg-shaped was an early theory of Klingon cosmologist. You're stretching, Clar. It all fits. The talk pok flower is egg-shaped. Therefore, I believe egg is correct for all equations. Kirk, in a barter society, might not a cow be worth, say, a pig with a clutch of eggs thrown in? <laughs> what? <laughs> Clar, I come from a farm on Earth in a state called Iowa. Your solution makes some sense, but so would pig plus crate of apples equal cow. It's something else. If I may, based on the evidence, I remain convinced there is no answer. A time will come when we must answer. I'm willing to let either of you answer. The Brassica will allow only one to answer. 
Uh, let's save it. That, that was like a, enough of a back and forth where it leads me to believe McCoy might have been the correct answer to the second one. Let's do a new save. Save new game. Uh, save new cancel. All right, delete, delete previous. previous game. Save new game. Okay, eight. So this is with, um, who do we have left? Actually, let's just say who we used first. Uhura. McCoy. All right, uh. Captain, you hear one question. All right, let's just use Spock again, just to do my original theory. The question I heard. Your answer is accepted. You plan to make off with everyone? Do you really expect me to keep taking that without protest? The next question awaits, Captain Kirk. Let's see how this goes. The two captains. I am astonished that an alien like you has muddled your way this far. Answer this. There are two present. Only one may go. Why should you? Why should you be the one to leave this place alive? Okay, why should you? Why should you be the one to leave this place alive? Okay. Intriguing question, Kirk. Two captains representing empires at odds with each other. The Federation is no empire, Klar, and the Organian Treaty assures we are not at each other's throat. Be honest. There are many differences between us. I wish to hear your analysis before I offer my own thoughts. Analysis? I'd hoped you'd thought of something new. I'm having second thoughts, and I want to go over my ideas with you again. I'd hoped you'd thought of something new. It's simple, Kirk. You go, or I go. A third option would be nice, but unlikely. We could try the third option. I'd hoped you'd thought... I'm having second thoughts, and I want to go over my ideas with you again. You go or... Since I represent the peaceful and unified Federation, I'm the only one possible answer. We would share the Braska knowledge, even with the Klingons, but I doubt the reverse would be true. This is best for everyone. I might surprise you, Clark. I believe the Braska will come to us in time. The Klingons need the civilizing influence they offer, and you're the best representative. I'll bow out, and you proceed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't like the choices. I want another alternative, but I'm not sure there is one. I feel the same, Kirk. I have a thought about how we might deal with the question. Oh. Go ahead, Clar, I'm listening. Forget it, Clar, I have my own idea. Go ahead, Clar, I'm listening. They're asking us to choose one to proceed and one to remain. That's the implication of death for the one who remains. I concur. They want an answer that either I live and you die, or you live and I die. I say we answer, we both live. Or both die. I like the way you think there, Clark. Good concept. What if they refuse? We choose it. Whether they offer or not. Then we both die. Game over. And if it's not the answer I give? We shall see, won't we? We shall. We're ready with our answer. Let the one who would answer be the next one to talk. I'll just let the one who would answer. All right, so just I'll answer then. You want me to choose one of us or the other to proceed. Well, frankly, I don't think it's right to put either of us at risk. We're both starship captains, both legitimate representatives of millions of inhabitants on thousands of planets. I want another alternative, another choice. Captain Kirk, you have stepped forward to make your choice, and that choice is very simple. I proceed from this room alone. Allow Captain Clark to proceed from this room alone. We both proceed from this room, or neither of us does. Yeah. So together we stand, united we fall. There is no such option offered. What exactly do you mean by choosing in this way? That perhaps you should both die? No, Brassigan, it means we're changing the rules. You want one to remain, perhaps or die, and one to go on? We refuse to play that game. You want to meet with us as much as we wish to meet with you, so take us both through, or let us both remain in this surreal purgatory forever. Take it, or leave it. You have confounded me, Captain Kirk. I did not believe you would make such a choice. Yes, none of the above. But I declared all along that this race had the qualities we sought. The understanding of both leadership and sacrifice. Captain Kirk, you have achieved all that I, at least, had hoped of you. It is time for us to greet you face to face. Indeed. 
Whoa, Comet Salads indeed. We look forward to a long and fruitful relationship with both your peoples. Your starships will be welcome here on any peaceful mission. Thank you. I am pleased to meet you face to face as well. However, I want my crew back. Of course, Captain. You're all right, all of you. You were treated well. They didn't even beam in. Oh, they got cocktails. <laughs> a little martini there. We are unharmed, Captain. We engaged in enlightening discussions with the Brassicans. They felt it necessary to isolate themselves so long ago because of interstellar disputes between. Later, Spock. Right now, I'm glad you're okay. Indeed, Captain. We are well. But they couldn't be sure we would pass all their tests. Brassican, how do you explain that? Some of us could not restrain our desire to learn. It seemed worth the risk and has proved so. I believe the Federation and the Brassica will have a long and fascinating future together. Although my associate, Sapthi, has great misgivings about breaking our isolation, others of us have high hopes. Got high hopes. You are star-eyed, uh-uh, if you imagine that no difficulties lie ahead. However, all conditions have been met, and so I also welcome you, Captain Kirk. Thank you. Septhi, is it? Yes, and our moderator, leader to you, is Zenti. Zenti, aha, uh -huh, and Septhi. <laughs> oh. I hope to show you you've made the right decision. Speaking for the Klingon Empire, I too look forward to the relationship between all peoples. You surprise me, Kirk. Perhaps one day we will even trust you. We'll just have to see, won't we? Captains, feel free to look around while we summon your two ships to these coordinates. Captain Kirk, I have something interesting to show you over here. Come with me. Yeah, not you, Captain Clar. You stay stay back and drink some apple martinis. Oh yeah, well, let's see. Let's see. Save new game. Replace. The other two aliens seem to defer to this Brassican. However, the bizarre features render incomprehensible any expression. <laughs> Strands of strange clouds reach across the hazy pink sky. A distant dwelling of the Brassica. Look at his legs in there. It is impossible to decipher any emotion or expression on this alien. You know, like, mug me in behind, <laughs> behind there? Perhaps you should talk to the alien named Septhi, Captain. Perhaps. Jim, go talk to Septhi. You talk to Septhi. Captain, I think you should talk to Septhi. Captain Kirk, isn't it time you returned to your ship? You'd think so, wouldn't you? I was unsure. You have shown us that isolation is no longer a wise choice. I look forward to a challenging future. This is a day we will celebrate. The day we broke out of our isolation and joined the other races among the stars. Oh yeah, we can use our... <laughs> skin. The Brassica are quite an unusual life form, Captain. They retain certain vegetable characteristics, that, which really? might account vegetable? for some of their caution in dealing with other species. The they may have been prey for even relatively non-threatening species. Jim, I've never had readings like this. How should I know if they're healthy or not? All right, will they let you actually shoot these guys? Your subconscious knows better, Aww. and the phaser remains right <laughs> After all where that. it is. <laughs> So let's kill him. Medical treatment. Jim, it'd be unethical of me to shoot medications into these people. See, that's why I really respect this game. Like, rec they had them record every single possible dialogue. Like, how many people would you know after all this would not? All right, it's the end of the game. You go to talk to him to complete the game. Instead, I'm like looking around like an idiot here, and they actually recorded dialogue for this stuff. That's incredible. Oh man, I respect that. Very detail oriented. Captain Kirk. I have misgivings about the Klingon race. For our mutual protection, here is a parallels disk of data which I want you to have. With this knowledge, you can come to our defense. Will you take it and safeguard our future? Uh, okay. 
Yes, I'll take the disc. Not without knowing more about it. No, take it up with the Federation ambassador when he gets here. Yes, I'll take the disc. Oh, yeah, I'll take it, I'll take it. Do we have it? Yes. Tasty disc. A paralens contains data and may be examined by a reader console. Why are we behind this? disc is a tight lattice carbon construct, an industrial grade diamond. It can probably be shattered rather easily, although it should not break if simply dropped. I trust you will fulfill your promise, Captain Kirk, and use that paralens wisely. You have chosen poorly. I trust you. You about done, Jim? You kind of look like you got something else. <laughs> yeah, I know. I want that apple martini before I go. Is there something else before we go, Captain? I think our mission is about finished, Captain. Unless you have something you wanted to show me. Oh, I got something I want to show you, Spock. Why don't you come here back behind, <laughs> behind the building? <laughs> show you a lot of things. Uh... <laughs> this appears to be another of the Paralens discs. Without a reader terminal, it is not possible to extract the data. All right, what else could, what else could we show? Uh, yeah, no, I think we're good. Captain, it's good to speak with you again. These overgrown beanstalks told us that you'd come to no harm. Ready to beam up? Not yet, Scotty. There are still a few oh. loose ends. Kirk out. All right. I have no advice to offer about the Paralens, Captain. I believe you know best what to do with it. I have no... Wait, I see. have no... What, we have to give it to Klar? That's not great. Or share it with Klar? What's this, Captain Kirk? A paralens? Braskin data, no doubt. Are you turning it over to me? Yes, in the name of the trust and cooperation, Captain Clark, the data disk belongs in your hands. Well, they asked it us, they didn't trust it to us, though. It's gonna Not only to show it, Captain Clark, do you have anything to share as a result of seeing this? Yes, in the name of the trust and cooperation, uh. Captain Clark, the data disk belongs in your hands. Ooh, gosh, neither of these seem like good choices. I don't want to give it to him. Not uh. only to show it, Captain Clark, do you have anything to share as a result of seeing this? Then that's just gonna piss him off. All right, let's just give it to him. But it's probably the bad thing. These guys are gonna be pissed. <laughs> like, you give it for to save it for yes, us. In the name they want to be defended by us. What is it exactly? You might want to reconsider, Captain Kirk. What if I substituted a scan of Federation space and told you it was a scan of Klingon space? Yeah, I probably shouldn't have accepted the disc without finding out more about it. I guess. Substitute a scan of Federation space, what? These aliens gave you a scan of our sovereign territory, Kirk! I demand you give that to me! If it is a scan of Federation territory, Captain Kirk, you will be branded a traitor if you hand it over. A difficult quandary, is it not? They're still heading us with these ethical questions? And the last Brassican test! Is it not, Zinti? Even if you had a reader console to examine that parallels, which of you would read it? So we will not provide it. Oh my God. If you believe that makes this the last of our tests, so be it. This disc contains data which could bring about war. It must be destroyed. Yeah, probably. Clara, you have shown a level of honor I never expected. Take the parallels. If it's a scan of Federation space, I trust you to see it destroyed. Clara, if this is a scan of Klingon space, you have my word it will be destroyed. This disc contains data which could bring wow. about war. It must be destroyed. All right, well, we already kind of trusted him halfway and it already got us into trouble. Ugh. No good options here. Uh, I'm forgetting which one that is. Isn't that one where you could push somebody else and something else happened? Yeah, I've forgotten. Orange Passage. Yeah, but actually, if you destroy it, isn't that going to piss them off? Isn't going to piss off the beanstalks? <laughs> Either way, it's not going to... Alright, let's just, you have shown a level let's just go all in on the trust. Take the parallels. We'll be, we'll be a, a traitor. A Federation space, I trust you to see it destroyed. Trust brings trust, Kirk. Yeah, see? I was given this. 
They told me it was a scan of Federation space, and I had not decided what to do with it. Now I know. Uh, are you gonna give it to us? Aren't you hasty, Klingon? <laughs> what if that data was really the best examples of our technologies? Why would we offer the knowledge twice? If it's scans of the sovereign space, then no one should have them. If it's research data, that certainly isn't your only record of it. We will show you we can be trusted. You have won our respect, Captain. Yay. Both of you. Those disks were blank and no scans existed. This was truly the final test. I am greatly reassured about our intersecting futures. Intersecting. I doubt we have seen the last Brassican test, Zente. Seems to be your nature. The Klingons will do well. Now I think it is time for us to go. Indeed. Let me leave you with this. Individuals among us act as individuals for good and for ill. But overall, the different races of the Federation are joined in a mutual respect that overcomes differences. I think you will be pleased with us. I think I can already see that, Captain Kirk. Farewell. Farewell. It's weird how those guys didn't get beams there before. Yeah, she got an apple martini. She was waiting for us. Captain's log, Stardate 6270.5. We have succeeded in making formal contact with the Brassica. We look forward to a long and productive relationship with them. So, Lieutenant, you turned down the Brassica's offer to become the Federation official ambassador. Not in my job description, Captain. And they were probably just testing me. Yeah, probably. A formidable accomplishment, Captain. I'd say so. Establishing diplomatic relations with a new and advanced alien race. Improving our relations with the Klingons. Impressive. Thank you, Mr. Spock. Everyone's so cheerful today. Even Spock's in a good mood. This makes me nervous. Message from Starfleet, Captain. There's my answer. I have reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. Yes. I am very pleased with your performance. Yay. It was a perfect mission, perfect. Jim. Your reputation as Starfleet's best starship captain is secure. Kane out. I'd say so. I'd say so. Another message from Starfleet. On screen. Jim, we have evaluated your current series of missions, and we are satisfied with your performance. Satisfied. Satisfied. You've it was good. good it's okay. Lately. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral. Good, not great. See, that's why... This is why, by the way, for those wondering, why we didn't settle for any twos... Like, at each, each mission or episode, you could get uh, between, I guess, one to four, or zero to four points. And we, we made sure we well got done, at least Well done, Captain three. Hippo. Thank you. Thank you, Suck Threat, for the 100 bits. Appreciate it. Thank you. That's why we made sure we got at least a three in each mission. Because at the end, we didn't want a few enough where it would be like, fuck, it wasn't a good ending. We'd have to go way back to, like, mission three or something like that. It would have been terrible. So that's why we made sure we got at least three in each of the missions to get a good ending. That's all, Jim. Starfleet out. He could have been a little more enthusiastic. We haven't been doing badly. Yeah. Starfleet was not built on adequacy, Doctor. They have always had high expectations. And so they should. We can always do better, Bones. So, yeah, so I wonder if this dialogue is different if you get, like, all fours. Get perfect, every mission perfect. I think I reached my limits a long time ago, Jim. None of us have reached it yet, Bones, but somewhere out there, there's a new challenge. And I can't wait to see what it is. Yeah, fortunately there weren't there were only like three combats. And only one of them which was tough against the uh, World War One guy. The flying ace, the Red Baron.
Oh, we never did see those cavemen guys come in. That would have been great to see that part of the mission. Yes, after 20 hours and 14 minutes, Star Trek Judgment Rights has been read its last rights. I guess I did hear you correctly. You said you were going to beat the game tonight. Just like I heard you say, J.F.A. J.F.A., yeah, we did uh, defeat this game. We uh, completed all uh, eight episodes and our uh, missions to the uh, satisfaction. Of Admiral Richards of uh, Starfleet Command. <laughs> yeah, there will be more Star Trek games left to uh, conquer, indeed. Uh, yeah, so it was um, a continuation of 25th anniversary. Uh, better because it didn't have as many uh, fighting sequences, which were the worst part of uh, the games, to be sure. Some interesting things there at the end. I like the plots of each of the episodes. Still some weird uh, things with the mechanics, inconsistencies. Uh, which was sort of strange. Uh, a couple of bad pixel hunting in a couple of cases, and some truly odd puzzles. But overall, it was really enjoyable, primarily because of the uh, the writing, the interaction between the characters, the voice acting. Um, that was it was more fun just like to watch, the, trying to treat these as standalone episodes and not uh, necessarily the gameplay itself per se. Although that was you know still fun, but I think uh, there were still some really sharp. Uh, inter-chemistry between the characters, particularly, of course, as always, uh, Bones and Spock. Even Kirk got in on the mix, so. So, yeah. Nice, uh, I think it was slightly better than, um, 25th Anniversary. Still enjoyable, I think, uh, even I'm not a big, uh, trekker, but I really, um, uh, appreciated uh, this, and, um, particularly some of the early episodes was, uh, really good in that respect. So, yeah, very, uh, very strong game. Uh, not, not perfect by any means, because again, there was like problems with playing it, but um, definitely quality. Yeah, nice. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> did you did you cut, did you cut that one, Matt? Did you, did you cut it? All right. Well. All right. So we'll head to our uh, Hall of Adventure. We're gonna game number one hundred and eighty-three, Star Trek Judgment Rights. Put it up up on the shelf.